Hello, hello! Today I will be featuring a bit of an odd ship, the Monarch, the Tier 8 the Royal Navy Battleship. Now the matchmaking is Tier 10, as you can see, and I'm pink in this game. Well, if you watched my King George V commentary, you will know exactly why I am, why I am pink in this game. Regardless though, the Monarch is a bit strange. Well, first of all, it's, it has 381 mm guns. It has the same North Carolina, Alabama kind of uh, gun turret setup, but as you can see from the back turret, the firing arcs aren't quite that good. The back turret does get blocked by the superstructure, which does limit the firing arcs a fair amount. The health pool is also, in Royal Navy style, much lower than, well, much and much, but around 10% lower than what the competition has. But 60k at tier 8 isn't really that much of a problem because it is very, very stealthy. In fact, if you go to this full stealth build that I'm using here, you can see the transparent circle on the minimap. Uh, that is my concealment, which is 10.9 kilometers. Uh, I think the air spotting is also only 9.7. So the concealment is quite excellent. Um, it beats out some comp for comparison. I think the Alabama gets like something around 12.2 So you realize just how good 10.9 is it is very very stealthy and uh, It's of course an advantage especially when fighting high tier battleships or cruisers or whatever Since you can outspot pretty much all of them and you get to pick the fight Which is something you kind of have to do because the guns are not that strong as I said 381 millimeter I needed spotting rain, the spotting plane to even reach this Neptune. Uh, the small caliber guns also tend to mean, well in this case especially, shorter range. You only had 18.1 kilometers of default range and that I think is the shortest at tier 8. I'm pretty sure every single other battleship has better range. Uh, ships like NC have like 21 km, Amagi has around 20. So this one sitting at 18.1 is of course a pretty big drawback. With the spotter plane you can of course extend it, uh, but relying on the consumable to be able to shoot at range is of course a drawback. Uh, reload is 25 seconds, which is of course an advantage because pretty much all the other battleships sit, sit around 30. So the 25 second reload is an advantage, but it's kind of there to make up for the fact that uh, because you have 381 millimeter guns, your AP Alpha is significantly lower. I think your Citadel damage is 10.9k and uh, of course your penetration also tends to suffer from this because, well, a lower caliber guns, uh, well, lower penetration. Oh. Uh, yeah, I feel, no, it's actually 11.9 since uh, overpen is 10%, so 11.9k alpha on the citadels. And that gearing got to enjoy some lovely battleship AP, it looks like. Always fun and engaging. No, I think I ate the torp. Still, though, um, the one thing I've been wondering the most about this monarch is is it can it be used in competitive? For those that aren't aware, tier 8 is considered a competitive tier, and of course, the monarch uh, has attracted great interest in this sense um, since people want to know will they be able to use it in a competitive sense. The anti-air on it is actually quite good. It's not as good as the North Carolina and Alabama and the reason why it's not as good is mostly because it, like all Royal Navy battleships the long-range aura is quite weak. However the mid-range aura, it actually has two mid-range auras, two uh, 40 mm ball force setups and the mid-range aura is actually very good. It's in fact better than the NC's mid-range aura. So in terms of AA, it, it doesn't quite compete with the Alabama or NC, but it does outshine uh, the Amagi quite, quite considerably. And uh, if you do go for something like AFT and uh, the AA range module, then you can easily get a 5km range on the mid-range aura, which will make it probably very frustrating to try to drop this ship. So, mid-range, the AA is quite good on it, quite competitive, and uh, any sort of AA build will make carriers hesitate in striking you. Um, the Citadel is, in Royal Navy style, very low below the water. It is much lower than any of the uh, competition, it's even lower than the Alab Alabama Citadel, so it's very unlikely you will ever be hit in the Citadel. If you do get hit, it's some sort of max range fluke shot. In close range brawling, you are pretty much an Amagi in the sense that you cannot be Citadeled at all. So that's of course a considerable advantage. So 
And um, well, of course, another thing worth mentioning is it's a bit of an odd duck in odd duck in terms of the fire chance because well, before this we have the King George um, King George V, which has a forty percent fire chance, and then after this we have the Lion, which has a forty eight percent fire chance. But for some reason the Monarch only has a thirty five percent fire chance. Now this isn't necessarily bad. I mean, I think the Amagi has what thirty percent fire chance. And uh, you gotta consider this ship also reloads faster. You saw the great stealth there being able to open up on the Zaa without him knowing. That's of course very, very strong. But um, at a 36% fire chance, 6.3k HE Alpha, Amagi has uh, 6.5. So you lose 200 damage on the, on the HE Alpha and one gun. But in return, you have a 25 second reload, which is of course 5% faster and you also have a 6% higher fire chance. So the one role I could see the Monarch being used in is the, the roaming type of role that the Amagi has been doing so far because it does it does fulfill quite easily many of the same values that uh, the Amagi does. Um, it might even it might even be better at it. I'm not entirely certain. You do trade off some health, and uh, but you're pretty almost impossible to citadel. You have very you have very much the same armor. The Amag is 32 millimeter all over, and the Monarch has exactly the same situation. Uh, and AA is much better on the Monarch, which means strike, which means that the carrier needs to babysit this roaming ship less, since you can kind of defend yourself against the carrier if he does go for you. And of course, the stealth is much better on the Monarch than it is on uh, the Amagi. So, as a roaming type of uh, HE spamming, especially since, uh, well, in competitive, people tend to shoot a lot of HE since it's more consistent, having this faster reload and higher fire chance means that as a roaming type of ship, the Monarch could perhaps fulfill the role. It's not like it comes only, of course, with advantages compared to the Amagi. There are downsides. Downsides include, of course, 10% loss in health pool. Um, the torpedo belt is nowhere near. I think the stock Amagi torpedo belt is 43. Then when you slot modules, you get it something like 45, 46. But 43 is stock, whereas this one has a stock torpedo belt of 24%. It's not quite as bad as, uh, I think, NC that has 21. But if you do it torps, in this case, two gearing torps, one on the belt, I think the other on the stern, it does hurt. It does chunk you out quite heavily. So there's no super torpedo belt here. It's just 24% belt. So torps will hit you harder. But then again, if you're roaming uh, in competitive, you usually will have some sort of uh, torpedo screening in the form of carrier help. So that might not be as much of an issue. The AP, well, you will suffer or you will have issues dealing uh, the same kind of damage as you deal in the Amage. But then again, you do have the faster reload and you do have the better kind of a turret setup in the sense that, well, this is um, how much broadside you need to show to shoot all your guns. You can see it. Well, you, I can't shoot my back guns on the Zao here, but you can get a, get an idea of what kind of angles you have to use. So uh, the, the Amagi's role is the one role that I could see the Monarch replace. It won't be replacing the NC or the Alabama. It doesn't have the AA power to create the same sort of AA bubble, but the, the Amagis role is something that it could actively contest, and that's of course the actively roaming type of role. Uh, it is weak to IFHE, just like Amagis, thanks to the 32mm armor, but seeing as Wargaming has been talking about nerfing that, and they've just recently released some ideas about nerfing it, it might not be as popular. There's also been a lot of limits lately in different competitive leagues on just how many IFHE ships you can use and so forth. But that's enough about the competitive and what role I, s I might see the ship replace. In random battles, the ship is okay. Honestly, I don't really think it's quite as strong as something like an NC is in randoms. Um, the, the ability to brawl more freely is quite nice. You don't have to worry about being citadeled and that, that means that you can be very aggressive with the ship. And uh, you don't need to be as worried of ca carrier strikes either, which is of course quite nice. But overall, the guns, the guns can be very frustrating because the AP pin can suffer, and the AP alpha is pretty underwhelming. And overall, I I rarely have these straight up bad games in this ship. 
but I haven't really had any of these super monster games that I might have in the other ships where you really get to punish broadsides. And of course the range, if you do get, many of the high tier maps have pretty terrible design, they are far too open, uh, they leave very little room to push and so forth. So even if you have this great concealment, the 8.1 default range can be pretty anemic at times. Sorry about my phone. But, I mean, you, do, you can fall back on the HE as you see here, of course, uh, when you do land enough shells, you do get some good fire chance. 35% fire chance, 36% fire chance is nothing to scoff at. Um, it's, uh, the, it's basically Montana fire chance, except um, you have better HE alpha. Montana has 5.7k HE alpha, you have 6.3k. So you are able to lob every 25 seconds uh, at this HE that is stronger than Montana's HE. So, uh, once again, like many of the Royal Navy ships, especially on the lower tiers, um, the Monarch benefits heavily from actively switching ammo type when need be. Oh, finally get to find the gearing that taught me earlier. Uh, if you didn't notice, I sat too long in a smoke. I was smoked up by my... Uh, I sat too long in a smoke and I got punished by the gearing torping the smoke. So, well, it did provide a good example of the torpedo belt, but that was of course quite unfortunate. That guy actually got a lucky detonation from my full pen damage. My full pen would have killed him regardless, but he was lucky enough to die from a pen, or die from a detonation. The game does end though, and uh, I, the damage is not really impressive, but this did kind of show how you can play around with this monarch, if you noticed how much of the time I was undetected behind the islands, and how much you're able to pick and choose when you engage, thanks to the excellent stealth. But overall, the Monarch is, I wouldn't really call it overpowered, because I, 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 there are many situations where I feel like I would just have done better in any of the other tier 8 battleships. It's kind of a weird ship, 25 second reload, 381mm guns, it's kind of weird, uh, really good stealth, but then again, lower health pool. It doesn't have those super guns that you get with the Lion, and uh, it's overall, it seems like a pretty solid ship, a bit different. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I like that they're adding this different kind of battleship. And I don't know. It's a. I would say that this is one of this is a, one of the more balanced ships in the line. Um, it take will take some getting used to, especially the whole ammo switching thing. But it's not weak. It has its distinctive strengths, primarily the concealment. But it's not really overpowered either because in a direct fight um, you're not going to be that really scared of it once again because of the lower caliber and significantly lower fire chance compared to the rest of the line. It's weird that the f fire chance goes 40% uh, uh, tier 7, 35% tier 8 and then 48% tier 9. So there's this dip in, in place exactly for this ship. Why they decided to do it that way I do not know. Basic speed 2.6k. And of course, if we look at uh, damage done, the potential damage is, is, is pretty high since I got quite a lot of focus and I even had some corpse thrown my way. You don't have any super heal, so I haven't really healed any special amount. You, you only get the super heal at tier 9 in the Royal Navy line. Damage wise, I mostly shot AP this game, mostly because, well, I got to pick and choose a lot of broadsides that I could use it on. But in uh, other maps, or especially in ma ships like as in standard battles and such, you might use HE more. But overall, if you do manage to stay, stay undetected, uh, thanks to your concealment, you of course get to pick and choose when you open up and when you get spotted, which allows you to use AP a lot more than you would expect. Anyway, let me show you my recommended build for this ship. Alright, as usual, I will start off with the modules. Module-wise, I do think that the best first upgrade is going to be the hull. Not only does it give you a nice chunk of health, uh, something like 10% health, even more, and uh, it buffs your AA, it buffs your rudder shift, it's overall just a great upgrade. Uh, your stock range is pretty terrible at 16.5, but thanks to your concealment, I don't think it'll really be that much of an issue. Also, of course, since you can slot a uh, spotter plane, you should be able to make do until you unlock your range upgrade. And once you have range, of course, you should get the engine upgrade. Consumable-wise, premium repair and heal if you can afford that spotter plane for shooting smokes and increasing that range, because as I mentioned, the range is only 18.1, which can be... Uh, troublesome, especially if you're dealing with tier 10 matchmaking. Upgrade wise, uh, main armaments mod, because once again we got this. Well, these turret faces aren't that flat actually. This might have some resistance to being knocked out the same way 
uh, that you tend to suffer. What are actually the armor on these turret faces? Let's see. Give, show me the turret armor. Three, okay, still only 381. What does actually Alabama have? 457, yeah. So they're probably gonna suffer. They are most likely gonna suffer from the same issue. So that's the best possible option, I think, for all Royal, Royal Navy battleships. Better accuracy, although uh, with the carrier missions coming up in the campaign, it might be a good idea to go for the AA guns mod, which will of course increase the AA range from uh, 3.5 to 4.2, and then you can spec uh, AFT if you want and increase, to f increase it to 5km. And of course the long range aura will become uh, 5.4, so a very valid option for the Monarch, since it does have quite good anti-air tankiness and faster rudder shift. Uh, takes it down to a 12 second. Thanks to the stealth, I don't think you need damage control as much, since you should be able to disengage and use your repair whenever you're disengaged and uh, undetected. So I prefer the rudder shift and finally, of course, concealment, since that's one of the strengths of the ship. Um, you should build upon that. Captain perks wise, uh, uh, I'm not entirely certain. I'm running. Uh, um, this is actually my Edward McNee captain, but I'm not certain if this is a build I would like to run. But it's one I've been running with and testing with uh, Vigilance. But I might just run my normal uh, Jack Dunkirk captain on the ship when it comes out, which, of course, instead of Vigilance, it has Jack of all trades and preventive maintenance, which I do like. I like having these two, but uh, either one will be good. Um, Either one of these captains will be good. I do pr I do really like priority target, uh, followed by of course turret traverse. The, I think the this one the monarch doesn't need turret traverse as badly because the calibers are fairly small, but it does of course help. Followed by superintendent and concealment expert, and then you get uh, adrenaline rush. After this, there's some options. You can go the vigilance fire prevention build that I am running that makes it fairly safe. Or you can go for the more aggressive oriented uh, jack of all trades and preventive maintenance instead of vigilance build. Now, or if there's carriers, then you have the option, of course, of going AFT. Manual AA isn't really that good on the Monarch because, well, it's not really that good on any of the Royal Navy battleships because the long range guns, uh, the long range aura doesn't have too much DPS, so doubling this isn't really that valuable as compared to increasing the range of the mid range. The Boa Force uh, benefits you a lot. Flags, same old, same old. Healing, reduced fire, faster consumable usage. That's pretty much very, very straightforward. Finally, I'll show you guys the camo. This is the default camo. Looks, oh, actually, my damn, this doesn't look too bad. This is actually pretty cool looking, pretty cool looking premium camo. It's a bit different than the other ones. I do quite like that. I do quite like that. And of course, the Citadel that I mentioned. Uh, let's put some comparison here. Let's take out the Amagi. Let's show the Amagi Citadel. You can see it's right at the waterline. It's of course a turtleback citadel the Amagi has, but it's right at the waterline, which is why plunging fire from long range quite easily uh, tends to citadel this ship. Whereas if we jump to our Monarch, you can see the citadel is far, far below the waterline. Like if you look, you can see just how deep it is. If you, if, if you consider where the waterline is. So this one is not impossible, especially in brawling. It's unlikely to ever get hit at all. Which is uh, something I've already commented on in the HMS Lion commentary, something I don't really like, but that of course is a strength for the ship that cannot be denied. Anyway, that was my Monarch commentary. I hope you guys enjoyed it.